and Instagram at United Intentions and Twitter at Higher Intention. Look for us on 99.1 FM, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, Stitcher, Blog Talk Radio, and many more. Over the next hour, we'll introduce you to some fascinating people and engaging discussions that may provide you with answers to assist in revolutionizing your own personal health. And now, here's Dr. Nelson. You're listening to the United Intentions Radio Network. I'm Dr. Nelson Bullmash, and you're now listening to another episode of Health Matters. My guest is Dr. Lori Shemek, a well-known pioneer who created global awareness of low-level inflammation and how it's responsible for the core cause of most illness, disease, faster aging, and weight gain. She's been sending out the message about inflammation long before inflammation was a buzzword. Dr. Lori has uncovered the pathway to the core cause of weight gain, inflamed cells that not only promote unwanted excess weight gain and belly fat, but poor health as well. She is a nutrition and weight loss expert, a best-selling author, and specializes in weight loss resistance. She has helped many people to once and for all lose the weight and feel better fast. She shows people how to, how to pick out the foods that help sabotage us and kick sugar addiction to the curb and shift from eating the wrong foods to the exact foods that burn fat. Dr. Shamick is the author of How to Fight Fat Flammation and the best-selling author of Fire Up Your Fat Burn. She is the leading health and weight loss. She is a leading health and weight loss expert known as the Inflammation Terminator. She has made her mission to help clients lose weight and educate the public on the toxic effects of certain foods and lifestyle choices and how they create inflammation in the body resulting in weight gain. She is a leading authority on inflammation and its role in weight loss, preventing disease, and optimizing health. The Huffington Post has recognized Dr. Shamick twice as one of the top 16 health and fitness experts, alongside such names as Dr. Oz and David Zinczenko, author of This, Eat This, Not That. The Huffington Post has also recognized her as one of the top 35 diet and nutrition experts. Lori is a health contributor to Fox News. She is also a health expert for ABC TV show, Good Morning Texas. And you, I can't even name all the uh, magazines here from Women's Day Magazine, Red, uh, Red Book Magazine, and many, many others. She is my special friend and guest, Dr. Lori Shemek. Welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Nelson. It's so great to be here, finally. Yes. You were, hey. you were so wonderful. Uh, I remember when I started this show some uh, some months ago, you said, I want to be one of your guests. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for your friendship. And well, thank uh, you. you're very, yes, very I, welcome. I, and I'm so happy for your show. So it's doing so well. And so congratulations on that. You are. Thank you. That's very, very kind of you. Uh, before we jump in, I want to want to recognize you. I always like to give a compliment where compliments are due. And one of the things, there's so many characteristics that I love about you and that I hear other people say about you that are so wonderful. Uh, and in today's day where, where there's, there seems to be so much sort of general angst in the world, it's wonderful to hear people speak highly of another person. So congratulations on that. And Thanks. you're so welcome. And I want to acknowledge this. You work 24-7, 365 <laughs> days of the year as one of the most I like inflammation, right? Yeah, yes, never <laughs> ends, never sleeps. You you are so motivated and you have helped millions of people. It's so funny. I will go on Facebook, I'll go on uh Instagram, and, and every corner I turn, there's my friend Lori, you know, with some great post, some great video, or a new book, uh, like the one <laughs> we're going to discuss today. What is it, Lori, that drives you to be such an advocate for humanity and to be so magnificent about your time, your love, your commitment to help people understand how important it is to make the proper choices in and around health, nutrition, and fitness? Wow, that's a really uh, such a nice thing to say, and I truly appreciate that. You know, it's um, but you know, I you know, I have a story. We all do, right? Right. And uh, mine goes back to when I was a child, and I was raised by a single mother, uh, and she really had no support. I had two younger brothers; I was the oldest, and so it was just the four of us. 
And uh, my mother had a constant stream of different health conditions. She um, was always, uh, there was one, it was one thing after another constantly, right? Right. And she had uh, no family support. She was estranged from her family. She had no husband. She had uh, no income and she, uh, very little income. And she was very overweight. She was, uh, obesity runs on my mother's side of the family. She, she was borderline obese. And so, um, uh, she was also under chronic stress. So you can imagine trying to raise three young children all by yourself wow. without any support, you know, and very little money. And <clears throat> so she smoked a pack and a half of cigarettes a day. And she had a terrible diet, okay? And I'm a young girl, and I knew she had a terrible diet yes. with mostly sugar. And she was she was very good about, you know, you children, I don't want you to eat a lot of this, right? right. I grew up to, uh, on Captain Crunch and Cocoa Puffs. So, Guilty. you know, Guilty as charged. back then a lot was a whole different story. Um, but uh, she, you know, it was really a sad situation. I remember often just walking into her bed, her dark room, seeing her just laying there suffering. But I knew, even at that age, intuitively, that she could make different choices. And I emphasized the word choice, okay, in this case. And uh, so, unfortunately, my mother's health, it just dwindled, and she died at the very young age of 36, leaving behind three young children with nowhere to go. We had nowhere to go. Wow. And it was really, uh, you know, you can just imagine not only losing the only person that you've ever known in your life, but then, you know, what do you do now? And so I say that because my mother had choice, but she didn't know she had choice, okay? Right. So it was at her memorial service that uh, I had like I really decided it was like an aha moment for a youngster to to really I wanted to help other people I didn't know how I was going to do it but I knew my mother needed help and I knew and I was a very sensitive child and, uh, and I had a lot of empathy you know uh, with people and so I knew that someday I was going to help people and so eventually I did I uh, went, I got my doctorate in, in counseling and went into counseling psychology. I did that for a long time. And yet my whole focus always was health. Sure. I, as a child, I remember just devouring health books, nutrition books, medical books. <laughs> and my, I really wanted to be a doctor. And, um, and then one day I said, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> and so... Uh, then I decided, you know, I'm going to go back to school. I got my degree in nutrition and also life coaching degree certification. And uh, I combined my background in psychology with my new health um, uh, information and just married all of them together to create what I'm doing now, which is helping people change their health, really put... Uh, create permanent behavior change is what I do. Well, you know, habits that are beneficial. How, how fascinating. Uh, number one, how tragic that your mother left, left life at such an early age. Right. And my goodness, how old were you when that happened? I was 17 when that happened. Wow. And my youngest brother was nine. And so you had the sole responsibility of being a sister and a mother to them all at the same time. Yeah, and you know, I had replaced, that was my role pretty much. Uh, my mother wasn't able to give of a lot of herself. Um, so I essentially took care of my bro my two younger brothers. And to this day, they tease me because all I knew how to make were eggs <laughs> for oh. dinner. So, <laughs> we hate eggs, Lori. I know, <laughs> you know, I'm sure. Well, well, they're so. easy and they're healthy. Uh, right. I'm sure at some point hearing your story, there will be a, a, a wonderful statue of you in Dallas somewhere. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so listen, what I want to do, I loved your new book. I really want to spend the focus of our time together on this. I so enjoyed this. My father, as you know, was a very, very wise man. And he used to say it takes a highly intelligent person to take complex topics and make them easy to understand. And there were a number of things that really struck me about your book. One is that it was very comprehensive. 
two, you took these topics that really are, are kind of controversial. I mean, you and I have spent a lot of years studying inflammation. And right. we, we know that silent inflammation, which is really what we're talking about in many cases, is mm -hmm. very, very destructive and really forwards the destruction of life in many, many ways and facilitates or, or, or helps bring on diseases that destroy life. So what I want to do is I want to ask you questions from your book, if that's okay with you. Oh, absolutely. Yes, please. So let's, I mean, we have people who are listening to us that have multiple doctorates, and yet we have people in my practice who are brand new as patients and mm -hmm. know virtually nothing. Uh, you know, they still eat the Captain Crunch, in other words. And, and so what I want to do is create a basis for us to jump off from, if you will, a platform. Right. Let's talk about right. what fat inflammation is to a person that knows nothing about inflammation. Because most people, Lori, when they hear the term inflammation, they think, oh, my child fell down, scraped his knee, and he has some kind of inflammatory process. He ends up with a scab. We clean it out. We put a Band-Aid on it. He goes about his way. What are we talking about here when we talk about fat inflammation? Well, I think it's important to talk about the, the types of inflammation very quickly. So the first type of inflammation is called silent inflammation. And it is um, what you're talking about. The other, t and I'll get to that in a second. The other type is acute inflammation, which most people are acutely aware of, yes. and not so cute. Right, yes, yes. <laughs> it gets your attention. It doesn't feel good. You know, it hurts. Right it's now. red, warm. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's painful. But you know, the thing is, it's an immune system reaction. We need it to heal without acute inflammation, such as like a sunburn, the flu, a cut on the finger, for example, um, we would, we're sitting ducks, really, we wouldn't be alive. And so um, I can take that cut on the finger. So when you cut your finger, an enormous amount of inflammatory molecules are released and soldiers, if you will, rush to the site to repair the wound. They repair the wound, the wound heals, the inflammation goes away, the soldiers go away, right. and all well, right? right? So that's acute inflammation. And I call it loud inflammation because it really does get our attention. And the next type of inflammation is called silent inflammation. And as you mentioned, you know, it, it's, it, um, it's, you know, it's silent. It's very nature. This, the name silent suggests that it's dangerous. Okay. Right. So silent inflammation is the core cause of most illness, disease, faster aging, and weight gain. Okay. Silent inflammation is like having a sore on the inside of your body that never heals. It is, it's, uh, uh, the core cause of diseases like heart disease, Alzheimer's, cancer, diabetes, obesity, uh, rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, I could go on and on with a list of diseases it sure. is the primary underlying cause of. Right. And um, so that is, it, it's kind of like a smoldering ember that if you don't douse completely will erupt into a full-blown fire later somewhere down the road. So that's silent inflammation. And uh, we all know, uh, people who have had it. Um, do you remember Star Jones? The yes. Celebrity Star yes. Jones. Well, Star Jones uh, had a little run in with it and she loved her food. She loved her sweets and her sugar, especially. And, um, you know, the, the, the foods, the high processed junk foods. And she talked about it. And she uh, said, though, very emotionally and poignantly one day, she goes, you know, I awakened in a hospital bed with tubes coming out of my body right. and she said it just changed my life she said they took my heart out they stopped it and then they put it back in wow. and wow. so that and she's fine now but you know that's an example of silent inflammation right there right the underlying core cause of these diseases right so she's lucky she changed her life she's fine but there are some like say john candy that uh, beloved actor, comedian, he wasn't so lucky. He was 42. Yep. yep. And uh, so the next type of inflammation is what my book is about. It's fat cell inflammation, or what I refer to as fat inflammation. And it is the silent inflammation of your fat cells. And the, the difference is, is that our fat cells are 
really uh, they are their own world, if you will, okay, these cells. Um, we used to think that our fat was just this jiggly mass that just kind of sat there and it looked so pretty. Yes. Well, we now know that's not true. Our fat is our largest endocrine organ, okay? Right. It's an organ, and it's actively sending out messages and more. It's determining whether to store fat or to keep storing fat or release stored fat the way a healthy fat cell is supposed to do, okay? Right. So um, you can look at your fat cells. We have about, and on average, 100 billion of them, if you can imagine, and they're all about the size of a period on the end of a sentence when healthy. Okay, but with the types of foods most people are eating these days, which is the standard American diet, very um, high in junky processed foods like cakes, candies, cookies, and you know, pretzels, and you know how it goes, uh, that is blowing these fat cells up, okay, because our fat cells become storage depots, essentially, for glucose and for fat and other compounds, and um, one of which... I'll talk about later uh, that actually creates a fat cell that's not happy okay this fat cell acts as if it's infected and um, you it begins to get cranky if you will and start emitting a low level of infl inflammatory molecules you don't know what's happening you really can't feel it but you know you're gaining weight right, right? And, that, and that's what's so scary that, that people don't recognize that this process occurs silently and just because it's silent doesn't mean it's not ultimately extremely deadly. Right. That's a really great point, Nelson. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's a silent inflammation just like in the, uh, the other cells in the body, but the fat cells are a little bit different in how they operate. So uh, one of the compounds that gets stored within the fat cell is called arachidonic acid. You don't have to remember the name of it, but this compound um, it comes from eating a diet high in omega-6 fat, which we can get into later. But uh, when that happens, the fat cell again begins to emit more inflammatory molecules. And so when the fat cell is not happy, uh, the inflammatory molecules have a, a response, a, a, um, an effect that slows down our metabolism. Okay? So you can look at your fat cells like little factories that are spewing out inflammatory molecules 24 seven. Right, okay. exactly. Um, that's, and that's pretty much it. So your, your fat cells are, your metabolism is slowing down, you're putting on weight, and it becomes a vicious cycle because the more fat and junk that gets stored in your fat cells, the slower your metabolism and again, weight gain. Got it, beautiful, thank you for that. So, okay. so let's do this. Our focus is on nutrition. Our focus is on fitness. What kinds of foods, so those who are, uh, the millions of people who are listening to us right now are thinking, my goodness, well, what am I doing? Am I eating or drinking things that are creating this silent inflammation that I don't know right. because it's silent? What kind of foods, right. Lori, uh, in particular, help drive these infl the, the silent inflammatory pattern of our fat cells? Well, it's, uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, foods that most people are eating, unfortunately. So it's your people really have a great, uh, uh, I want to say, body of knowledge in terms of what they shouldn't be eating. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah right, right. Uh, but, you know, here, I'll just give more information about it. Um, but the number one food, if you can call it that, is sugar, okay? okay. Sugar is the number one inflammatory food and um, it's in everything and that's the problem and I always say to people it's not your fault you know yes you know when you're eating too much sugar and eating a lot of sugar um, but the food manufacturers are adding sugar to almost every single product out there right. so and it's, it drives me crazy because people the average American for example ingests 156 pounds of added sugar a year okay that's, that's incredible it is incredible. It, it's in foods like ketchup. And I know you know this, but it's in... Oh, no, don't, even, don't hesitate to say, Lori, because yes, I know it and you know it, but many of the people listening don't. So please take the liberty. Okay, thank you. Yeah, of course. And so it's in, um, it's in ketchup. It's in chicken broth. It is in um, salad dressings. Anything. It's in bread. Right. Two slices of whole wheat bread 
for example, can raise your blood sugar as much as two tablespoons of sugar. Yeah. That's staggering. So it's a trap. It's a trap yeah. that gets us addicted. So we buy the specific right. foods that have the sugar right. in it that drive us to to eat it and then drive our disease processes. Yeah. yeah. And and so and that's really sad because a lot of people say, I can't get off sugar and I'm trying. I'm not eating. You know, I just have this craving. Well, it, part of it is because if you're not looking at the nutrition label and you don't and, and you don't you see um, if you're not if you don't understand that there's sugar in there yes. you're going to eat it and just fuel that addiction okay right, right. and the other thing that's happening um, is that you're changing your gut microbiota and that's something we can go into uh, in a little bit but that is fueling sugar addiction as well so um, you know sugar is even an Advil okay yeah, I know. In it's, these ridiculous. it's ridiculous it's ridiculous. Well, so, so, okay, so your number one food to avoid is sugar. What would be your number two if you have a number two? Number two, um, it's in, actually, they're, they're, I guess you could say that would be in order. Um, that would be omega-6 fats. Okay, and tell us about why omega-6 fats, why omega-6 fats are so destructive to the cells. Right, so many people, again, are eating past, um, manufactured processed foods and these foods are cheap they're made with cheap oils right. like soybean oil canola oil many people believe that canola oil is healthy you right. know right i know whole foods, whole foods. They, it's in everything everything on the, in their salad bar or their yes. th that section has canola right. oil and i've said for 15 years guys please get get caught up yeah yeah, but they don't care. No, they, no. They, I mean, it's really, care. really disturbing. Continue. I'm sorry, Lori. Oops, we're we're having a quick technical problem here. I think that uh, Dr. Lori Shemek is having some weather challenge in Texas there. So are you there? You go. Are you back there, Lori? <laughs> sorry about that. We lost I'm you for here. a second. <laughs> Come back to us, Lori. Come back. So, okay, we were talking about uh, how even Whole Foods, who's, you know, purported as, as being this great company who gives us all this excellent food and they serve food. Oh, we lost her. She'll be right back. I'll continue talking and she'll join us momentarily. How Whole Foods uh, purports to have all this great food. And if you check their oils, they have omega-6 uh, oils in the form of canola oil which, as we know, is not good. And I and what uh, Dr. Lori Shemek is going to discuss in a moment is how you really want to optimize the balance between omega-3 fatty acids and omega-6. So the omega-3 fatty acids, you have macadamia, you have chia seeds, flax seeds, uh, seafood like salmon are very, very good. And these foods help decrease inflammation while the omega-6s, the peanut oil, the soy oil, the corn oil, uh, help to actually increase the inflammatory cascade. So what you want to do is you want to become an educated consumer here and you really, really want to focus on learning how to read the labels and make sure that you're not getting hidden additives like sugar, uh, MSG, and, uh, you know, any any number of things. Is she coming back on here, guys? We lost her for a second here. Yeah, Lori, we're back here. I, I was just filling okay. in saying that we really want to focus on uh, eating foods that are rich in the omega-3 fatty acids like macadamia, oh. chia, flax, and salmon. And we want to become educated consumers and start reading labels and really paying attention to the the foods that we purchase that have the omega-6, like the canola and uh, um, soybean oil and peanut oil, corn, that kind of thing. Please take it away. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people get concerned. They say, well, you know, there's a lot of omega-6 in nuts and seeds. And and I always tell people not to worry about the healthy sources of omega-6 right. because right. omega-3 and omega-6 are very important and essential fatty acids. You need both. But the omega-6 that comes from the unhealthy cooking oils, for example, or the trash food, um, those are uh, highly processed and they're setting you up for uh, poor health later down the road. Okay, right. so it's causing inflammation within the body. And remember, I used that word arachidonic acid earlier. That is causing inflammation as well. Low level inflammation is circulating throughout the body. 
and then you're getting you're creating uh, weight gain, which is adding more low level inflammation in the body. They have uh, markers now that can determine that uh, six months before you begin to even gain weight, it shows in uh, your your blood. Wow! So it's very interesting what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very very unfortunate because you and I were born in a time where you just ate the food that was available, and the food that was available, Lori, was good and healthy. And so we've—I feel like we all were blindsided. I mean, come on, sugar in Advil? Are you kidding me? I know. Yeah. So it's amazing. So it's so important to make sure that we have a balance between omega-6 and omega-3, okay? Yes. The two of them. Omega-3 helps uh, to reverse uh, inflammation within the body. And it can't do its job if there's too much omega-6. Right. And guess what? We have an imbalance in favor of omega-6, 1 to 28, okay? Yeah, that's, so that's it's crazy. It's crazy uh, that ratio, and so the more omega three you add to your diet, the more of a balance you're going to have, and you can do it naturally simply by cutting out those junk foods and those cooking oils, and adding in more omega three fat inflammatory foods. And what do you think is the the best ratio, or the what, what guideline do you give people who are particularly educated listening to the show who will really pay attention? In other words, what do you think is the best balance, the best ratio between omega three and omega six? Ideally, you, we all would like one-to-one, -one, okay. but in this day and age, I don't think it's really realistic. So uh, one to 10 would be fine. One to eight would be fine. Anything that um, is higher than that, I would say no. Got it. You're causing too much inflammation. And, yeah. and, you know, Lori, one of the things I'm hearing is that it's so easy to be sabotaged. And, you, you know, <laughs> you go through life, you're an honest person, you're a good person, you're trying to have a good life, you know, live in your little house with your white picket fence. And I'm being a little playful here, but serious at the same <laughs> time. And Buying you, holy bread. Yeah, right. And you think you're doing the right thing, Lori. Right. And, and you get sabotaged. And all of a sudden, your physiology goes sideways. You blink your eye. Uh, I have so many people that I know who have type 2 diabetes, which, as we know, is primarily driven by lifestyle, uh, poor lifestyle choices. I'm dealing with a really dear friend of mine who recently had a uh, an A1C of over 13. Uh, oh. Yes. And I was I was horrified. So and this is this is a really, really intelligent person who thought she was eating pretty well. So it's disturbing that it's so easy to live in the world and to be blindsided, is my point. Right. And, on, you know, having said that, Nelson, we now are getting a lot of research in showing exactly what we need to be doing. Okay. Yes. Yes. And it's really cutting edge right now. A lot of people, dietitians and, you know, allopathic uh, physicians, etc., they are not on board yet with this. 99% of them are no, not. It's, it's In interesting fact, that you say that, Lori, because there was a doctor from the prestigious, I believe it was Georgetown uh, University Medical Hospital, and he actually, on one of the shows uh, here in Atlanta, either this morning or yesterday morning, was telling the listening audience that he didn't believe that there was any substantial evidence that probiotics are effective for improving health. I mean, this is, I'm not going to mention his name. I'm not that guy, but I, I, I was sitting here listening to this thinking, are you kidding me? Uh, probably I nearly know. every major university that does nutritional research yeah. can present very compelling research evidence as to how mm -hmm. beneficial, pro, you know, helpful probiotics are at oh, restoring gut. Say it again. <laughs> You, you, did you fall off your seat when you heard I, that? I, 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 was, I was stupefied. It's like, how can we be in 2018 with the brilliant – I mean, Lori, the research that's going on is so fascinating right now. You and I are, are, are pretty geeky. We, I, I could sit up all night long and read all the articles that come you know, down, my, down the pike for me to read about how brilliant proper diet and supplementation is at helping with anything from diabetes, cancer, uh, arthritic uh, issues, auto stabilizing autoimmune issues. You. So it, it's, yes, it's no, still blindsiding. It's, yeah. And so we now know there's, uh, there's an organization called Verda, Verda Health, and they have, they're using the ketogenic diet to uh, stop and reverse uh, type 2 diabetes. Okay. Yeah, right. And so this is profound because for many years, you know, <laughs> and what am I saying for many years? 
to this day, there people with diabetes are being are being recommended a diet that includes a lot of carbohydrates and you know sugar. They're even saying it's okay to eat sugar and excess fruit is just fine and yeah. uh, it, and so. But this this organization, Verda, uh, just did a, a clinical study and it was amazing. Eighty point eight percent of the participants were able to either. I think 50% of them reverse their diabetes type 2, and a good majority, a good portion of them were able to uh, get, uh, at least reduce their insulin dependence. Uh, yeah. yeah. Lori, it's remarkable to me because the very nature of diabetes is it's a carbohydrate metabolism disorder. Why would you ever feed people excessive amounts of sugar? All right. Exactly. Yeah. Why would you? It's a disorder of, uh, it's really an insulin problem. Yes. It, the sugar is a result of too much insulin in the body. You know, we just have, uh, um, it's just that we're treating it with a Band-Aid, essentially. Exactly. Lori, so, we'll be right back. We're going to take a, a, a break here so we can get a word in for our sponsors. This is Dr. Nelson Bullmash. I'm interviewing my guest, Dr. Lori Shemek, on her new hit book, How to Fight, Fight Flat Formation. The Think Different Consulting Group is focused on channeling the brilliance of the Steve Jobs Think Different 1997 marketing campaign. And we embody the following words from that ad. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs in the square holes, the ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them about the only thing you can't do is ignore them because they change things. They push the human race forward and while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Call Michael Litton at 770-552-0418 to see how we can help your organization think different about your marketing, sales, and advertising campaign. Dr. Nelson Bullmesh here again on Health Matters. I'm talking to my dear friend and guest, Dr. Lori Shemek. Lori, thank you again for joining us. We're thank talking you. about, you're welcome. We're talking about how to fight fat inflammation. And uh, Lori is the author of this excellent book. It is becoming quite a hit in the world of nutrition. Lori, we had talked about the first two markers that really increase inflammation, particularly the silent inflammation, the inflammation that, that uh, affects our fat cells specifically. And you were mentioning that they're the largest metabolic um, organ, if you will, in the body. So let's talk about number three. So we, we spoke about sugar. We spoke about uh, the balance between omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids. What would be your number three pick as the, the evil villain that throws off our balance here between uh, the proper state of inflammation and a war? of inflammation, a storm of inflammation? I would say an excess intake of carbohydrates. Okay, okay. You know, um, because, you know, the research is just out there. Yeah. I mean, it's good quality research showing that, you know, when you have an excess amount of carbohydrates, um, again, the insulin is an issue, all right? And it's not just about weight gain, it's about health in general. Sure, yes. When you for example, uh, intermittent fasting, which means simply that you skip a meal or you skip a day of eating or you skip three or five days of eating, right? Yes. Um, it's a way a diet pattern of eating. They have found, or the ketogenic diet, um, has found that it's very beneficial in tamping down inflammation and insulin in the body. So if you look at insulin, it is a growth promoter, okay? It likes to, and storage factor. And so when um, you don't have a lot of insulin around, there's a lot of good things happening in the body. Right, all right. right. Uh-oh. Lori, keep talking. We're, I'm having a little bit of trouble. You're, okay, there you go. Keep talking. You're, you're coming in and out. I think you got a bad weather storm uh, coming into Dallas. Um, so insulin is, is a very good hormone. But uh, too much of it is not healthy, and it's showing that when you uh, when you stop eating, or you you reduce 
your carbohydrate intake, then all the magic happens, okay? That's where we get cell health. We get cells that uh, get a chance to clean out, if you will. There's, a, there's uh, autophagy that happens. It's like cellular house cleaning. Yes. So when, when you're not eating, the cells are able to really do what they should be doing, which is cleaning out and right. reusing some of the, the, the gunk, if you will, and, and using it to create a better, healthier you. And so that's what happens when uh, you, especially with the fasting, you, you get more of a marked increase in autophagy. You get it with a ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet is really beneficial, however, for keeping that insulin uh, tamped down because you're doing it 24 yes. Right. But by the way, Lori, I wanted to mention to you, I don't know if you caught this, but it was either. Sorry, I read so many articles that I, I lose a, a track of, of, you know, where I or when I read them. But in medical news today, they I think this morning they announced the tremendous benefit of doing intermittent fasting, which once yes. again was shocking because that's all about hardcore research driven science. So yes. I, I was wonderfully shocked that it was one of their lead articles this morning. It is. It's a wonderful, you know, and it's not that hard. Okay, so um, I do it myself. I just don't eat breakfast. So my first meal of the day is around noon, okay? Right. And so my last meal is dinner. And so I don't eat for 16 hours. You know, sometimes 14, 16, it really doesn't matter. But as long as you get to the 14 hour point, that autophagy that I meant uh, kicks in and other really beneficial things happen to your body uh, when you're doing it. You're increasing your mitochondria, which are, if we remember back to high school. Yes, those high school biology. Are, Powerhouses right? of the cell producing cellular yeah. energy. Right. And now know that those powerhouses of the cell are key to a healthy life, okay? Inflammation and poor mitochondrial health and, and fewer of them create, uh, they actually go hand in hand. They create uh, a really tired, fatigued you, one that's gaining weight, sure. one that has cravings all the time and other health conditions, okay? So what we want to do is uh, we want to increase the health of the mitochondria, ideally. Ultimately, that's our goal is to uh, increase the number of mitochondria and the health of them. And to do that, intermittent fasting will do it or the ketogenic diet. So brilliant. Those yeah, great. it's wonderful because you're talking about cleaning house. And what's so neat is it is said that every six days or so, we replace all the cells of the digestive tract. So by right. doing this intermittent fasting, we give our body time to really repair and regenerate that gut lining, which is so important because one of the things we might talk about is that as the gut lining becomes really inflamed by making poor food choices, we get increased uh, inflammation, which leads to increased porosity of the gut lining, which means we're getting elements that pass through the, the intestinal tract that trigger immune responses and more inflammation. Right. And we don't want that. So uh, this gives us a chance, especially if you eat a diet that is, is, is optimal and you do intermittent fasting, you will heal that porosity of the gut lining that, right. uh, or leaky gut, they call it. And uh, I, I would say probably 90% of our population has it. Sure. And sure. They, do not, they do not realize it. Very, very, very good point. So... Let's talk about artificial sweetener since we're talking about eating. You know, this is one of my little... Number two, didn't you? <laughs> say, say it again. Uh, yes. You thought artificial. <laughs> yes, but that's okay. I, I, I'm not attached in any way, Lori, to the, uh, to the order uh, immaterial. But, uh, I, you know, one of my pet peeves is I still run into people who, after all these years, think that eating these artificial sweeteners is a safe and effective way to eliminate sugar from their diet and be healthy. Please, if you would, I humbly ask you, speak to that, that statement. Absolutely. I'd be honored. <laughs> so, um, you know, artificial sweeteners, we now know, are chemicals, all right? They are man-made chemicals. And what happens when we ingest something that's processed and man-made? Our body doesn't know what to do with it. Right. So it scrambles around trying to figure out what the heck to do with this stuff. And in the meantime, it's, it's uh, presenting as a poison or a toxin. And um, we, we know now that, uh, that artificial sweeteners uh, promote hunger, they promote food 
uh, cravings, they promote fat storage. We know that for a fact right. with human beings. And people wonder why, you know, they keep they can't get rid of their sugar cravings when they're not eating sugar, but they switch over to artificial sweeteners. And that's why. Because the brain is involved in this as well. The gut is involved with this. Um, you know, the gut, our gut is key to every aspect of who we are and what we are, okay? Right. And if you look, uh, just a little aside here, if, you know, if you look at all the cells in our body, we have, I, th I think, 100 trillion, trillion cells you got it. in our body. Yeah, and they're all, they're all like little bodies, okay? Yes. They all act exactly the same as we do. You know, they have Hang in there, Lori. We we have another little momentary <laughs> Skype food. There we go. Are you there with me? Back? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I like I said, I think the weather uh, in, in Texas is creating a little interference here. Uh, my my apologies. I, I missed the last thing you said. We had 100 trillion cells in the gut, and and we lost you there. Yeah, so they all act in concert together. Right. And um, our gut lining, we have cells in our gut lining as well. So when we ingest these artificial sweeteners, we also, uh, it affects our gut lining. It affects our brain. Our brain. It's, it, right. It, uh, it perceives it as it's not. It's something that it made with chemicals that can really damage a lot, uh, do a lot of damage. So I would absolutely take them out of your life. The gum, the the sodas, the candies, anything with artificial to ice cream, anything. Right, right. Uh, interestingly, by the way, they just came out, and I want to be careful here. I'm not not interested in in having somebody sue me, but uh, they did come out recently and suggest that, uh, in particular, one artificial sweetener is now being linked to causing cancer. So right. a lot of problems with artificial sweeteners, folks. Please stay off of them. Okay. Yeah, so they did that with saccharin for many years. And the, the issue with saccharin was, you know, it takes a billion times more, you know, uh, you'd have to have that much uh, that they gave the, rat, the lab rats. Yes. Okay. But that's not the point. Um, the, oh, no, it doesn't take much to interfere, right. okay, to create a habit with the body. And, you know, I, I think your point is also well taken that we, we live in a world that is so toxic. You don't want to be adding things that are not real, that the body says when you come in, who are you? Why are you, are you at my door? And what am I supposed to do with you? It's like the guest that comes to your party that you don't want to be there. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, we have uh, a lot of people don't understand about EMFs as well. Yes. Uh, more research is pouring in about electrical magnetic frequencies yes. from our cell phone, all the devices, you know, surrounding us and how that degrades our mitochondrial health as well. Sure. So we have to be proactive and protective about taking care of ourselves. And that starts with our nutrition. Our diet is key in every aspect, our diet. So in order to protect yourselves, from say EMS, for example, uh, magnesium is a nutrient right. that is very protective, and um, and not only that, but it, it is protective and beneficial for those who want to lose weight and to balance blood sugar. So there are ways around. I know we're jumping all over That's the place, but it's fine. It's fine. There are ways to to uh, really create optimal health. Well, let's let's do this, Lori. Let's spend a little bit of time on. What does that look like? Because the number one question after people's eyes glaze over in my mm. report of findings room and they stare at me like you, you've taken away my donuts, you've taken away my Captain Crunch, <laughs> my Tony the Tiger cereal, whatever the case may be, you know, my 12 ounces of orange juice in the morning. What, what, what is there left for me to eat? So let's talk about a little bit. What, like, what does it look like? What do you recommend? Mine is juice later. Okay, go ahead. Uh, that's okay. okay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. That's completely fine, Lori. What 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 does uh, like a breakfast look like to you if somebody chooses to eat breakfast? In other words, I understand if they decide to do an intermittent fasting, but for those mm -hmm. who don't, what does a healthy breakfast look like to you that really helps promote healing the gut lining 
increased energy production of the mitochondria and housekeeping that is superb. So we have cells that are healthy. We have inflammation under control. How would you feed a body that has that? I would, uh, eggs are an excellent source of protein and it's like nature's vitamin as they have so been called. I'm going to interrupt you a quick moment. I'm sorry. Say that again, Lori, for all those listening. I, you know, for countless years, I've had people say, oh, no, no, oh, eggs yeah. are very, very bad. Please say that again <laughs> for me, Lori. Eggs are excellent for you. They're, we now know they're healthy, okay? Yes. And there's a lot of misinformation. Uh, people, uh, experts were recommending not eating eggs because of the cholesterol and saturated yes. fat issue. Uh, we now know that, that uh, exogenous cholesterol is not the issue. Right. That saturated fat is healthy for you. Right. You can eat eggs every day if you want them. Uh, so, but yes. Whole eggs, I really recommend not cooking them very hard, okay? So if you do eat eggs, if you can take it that way, um, to cook them is uh, to, to you know, uh, poach them or to fry them not very hard because when you do that, it changes the nature of the fat in the egg, yes. okay? Yes, yes. Uh, so two eggs would be great. A half an avocado to go along with right. that would be another uh, uh, great choice and if you're not sensitive to tomatoes or uh, there's a tomato juice that I recommend so it would be a quick breakfast you know it would be yeah, something light to get you started your lycopene and there's a veggie drink that I use um, I have no affiliation with it's by Lakewood and it has broccoli cauliflower yes. tomato it's but it tastes like tomato juice right. and it has all those other wonderful things in it um, that's really healthy and so those three things right there would, would be, be fantastic be and, and Lori, one of the things i want to reiterate here and then we're going to take a commercial break is that the juice you're recommending has a low glycemic index so it doesn't spike insulin I, yeah right so you know the juice yeah i'm yeah. <laughs> very familiar with it thank you Lori. <laughs> All righty, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Nelson Vilmash here with my guest, Dr. Lori Shemek. We'll be right back. Hello, my name is Tim Ray, founder of the United Attentions Foundation, where we help people like you untap their true potential and consciously create the reality with their power of their intentions. We're a 501c3 nonprofit foundation, and we need your help. Imagine a world where kids can be themselves and just create. A world where businesses thrive under mindful thinking. An education program that teaches people to tap into their mind and create their ideal world with no hesitations. That's what we are doing at the United Intentions Foundation and that's what we are accomplishing. Each time you donate to this movement, you help fund our Imagine If program, where we talk to children in schools and teach them the benefits and powers of creating the reality they want to experience. With each donation, you also help fund our online community where people interact and support each other through the, our social media portal. Here you can create intentions, show gratitude, and connect with people all over the world. Our world is suffering from a crisis of perception, from childhood to adulthood. We have to shift our perception now and begin empowering all with the power of our intentions so we can live in a positive future. But this can only continue to happen if you continue to donate, so please, Click a reoccurring or a one-time donation. Now is the time. All right, Lori, I'm back. I just got a question off of Facebook. I'd like to read it to you if you don't mind. The question oh, cool. reads, can I eat coconut oil in my cereal, uh, and I think it says cereal and salsa, without adversely affecting my bad cholesterol? Salad. I'm so sorry. It looked like, sorry. So can you, can I eat coconut oil in my cereal and salad without it negatively affecting her bad cholesterol? Good Absolutely. question. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. So um, it's a very, you know, cholesterol is very, has a high amount of saturated fat, but we now know that, um, you know, uh, saturated fat is actually healthy for you. You need it for hormone development. You need it for brain health. You need it for heart health, skin right. health, the list goes on, eye health, you know. So, uh, but yes, you can absolutely have it. It's an excellent choice if it boosts metabolism. So if weight loss is your goal, it's a great oil to use. It contains, it's uh, a medium chain triglyceride, which means that it's utilized pretty much right away 
Um, it's in the liver, okay, right away it goes to the liver to be metabolized, which means it doesn't really get stored as fat unless you were to eat, you know, a jar, a jar of, it. of it. So Very good. Shelly, thank you for your question. <laughs> Lori, this is really a, yes. a good entry point, as a matter of fact, because the next thing I wanted to talk about is how does fat flammation uh, affect our delicate hormone balance? I'd love to go through that with you. So, like, what effect does it have on the thyroid? Right. It has. Uh, so typically people who are overweight, their thyroids start to go south. OK, yes. yes, that is just part part and parcel of what happens. And when you start to eat more uh, when you begin to re, re, uh, move the excess carbohydrates in your diet, the excess junk in your diet, and add in coconut oil, for example, uh, you heal the thyroid. It begins to heal and it begins to do better. And then you can cut down on your medication um, eventually. So they have found that the ketogenic diet is very beneficial in terms of healing a thyroid, helping to heal a thyroid. Um, a lot of people find that. Some people, however, have found, especially women, that it, it bumps up issues with thyroid conditions. But, you know, when you have inflammation going on in your body, low-level inflammation, all the hormones in your body are going to go haywire pretty much. Right. So your, yeah, so your, your weight loss hormone like leptin, uh, which tells the brain you've had enough to eat, is not working properly. It's it's not red. You're not registering that you've eaten enough. Okay, the yes. brain's not getting the message, right? Right. And other hormones like your hunger hormone ghrelin gets a little wacky, and uh, it's it's telling you you're hungry all the time when you're not. Okay. Yes. Uh, and you know we've got hormones that are just not operating properly. But once you tamp down on that low level inflammation, and I say tamp down because you never want to really get rid of inflammation. There's yes. always a role. Yes, for thank you. And thank you for yeah. clarifying that because yeah. without, in, without some inflammation, we cease to exist. So I appreciate right. you qualifying that point. Yeah. yeah. So it's really important that we do, you know, you know, a lot of people will take supplements to just reverse all the inflammation in their body. And that's not a healthy thing to do. If you do do that, then I recommend that you get off a couple times uh, a year. Get off the supplements. Right. You know, two to three times a year for a couple weeks. But, um, yeah, you know, there, there's, a, there's a role that uh, inflammation plays in the body, even low level. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Lori. So, Lori, let's go back. Uh, I want to talk a little bit more because I know I'm going to get a thousand or more questions from people. Well, you talked about breakfast. How about lunch and dinner? So let's take a moment, Lori, and let's speak about what, what might a healthy lunch, what might a healthy dinner look like to you? One that, that helps modulate inflammation, promote proper balance of hormones, product, and, and protect our delicate production of energy from the mitochondria. Okay, so I'll, I'll take it from a perspective of somebody who's eating carbohydrates, okay, a lot of carbohydrates in their diet. Uh, not a lot, but just say you're mediating the carbohydrates. Um, I would say that a low-carb or a, an ancient grain um, tostada or tortilla um, topped with, uh, sprinkled with cheese if you're not sensitive to dairy, and some chicken or uh, veggie protein alternative or vegetables uh, would be a great lunch with a really nice salad, okay? Um, uh, alternatively, you can use like a romaine la wrap, not now, but maybe in the future sometime. Right, right. <laughs> romaine lettuce. Yes. Um, or, or a collard wrap. Is, uh, collard wraps, they look like they're tough, but they're not. They're soft and they're easy to wrap things in. So you can wrap anything in those and uh, it works beautifully. So that could be a lunch, okay? Right. And, um, and then for dinner, you know, like for, I love chili. So I love chili with beans in them. Uh, in the chili, you can, make in, you can make it beef, turkey, any kind of chicken, chili, sure. any kind you want. That is a great dinner with a really uh, any type of vegetable you want. So I always recommend that people add in vegetables, a lot of them. Make your plate half vegetables. You can envision that. Yep. Okay, visualize yep. that. Good visual. <laughs> at every meal. And um, my meals, I really don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. Um, so, for example, lunch today, I had uh, a rotisserie chicken 
Okay. And I had a huge arugula salad with some broccoli sprouts and uh, the, some avocado in there and some MCT oil. So, and I used to mix it together with some onion and garlic powder. That's my salad, right? Fantastic. And I have my protein and then I have dark chocolate afterwards. Uh, Love it. Lori, so really what I'm hearing is you're a really big advocate of lots of fiber, lots of plant matter, some good healthy fats and oils. And right. uh, we're looking at here, you said the MCT oil was great. How do you feel about uh, real high quality butter? Like cultured butter, you you okay with that? Great, and uh, you're good with macadamia nuts oils. Uh, you're very good with olive oil. Yes, and avocado oil. Avocado I use oil, routinely. fantastic. Butter, grass-fed butter, I use routinely. It's very healthy for you. You know, we're going back to the way we used to be, and that's that's really you know our we're. We're all unique genetically, but we all have general generalizations, if you will, yes. in terms of what works for humans. Okay, and um, it, it, you know, it turns out. That Hi, Albert. This is Eric. <laughs> I thought, what? Well, somebody's in the room here. We got a poltergeist. Um, <laughs> this storm again. Um, so we're all wired differently. But, you know, overall, I think that um, we're going back to the way we used to eat. Yeah. And that means um, we're eating more plants, we're eating more, uh, you know, animals, we're eating less processed packaged food. Right. At least I'm hoping this is what's, gonna, what's happening. Well, I think so. I, I think you have a wave of this. I, I think people are waking up going, gosh, I'm really tired of not having energy, not being able to think, well, I have no memory anymore. I have no libido anymore. I have no energy anymore. Right. And that's right. a problem because there's no life quality there. Right. So, so you're you're saying, Lori, that we combine fiber we, we, in the form of plant matter. We get some raw seeds and nuts. We get good fats, good oils to balance out that inflammatory cascade. Good protein. And right, and help your gut health as well. Yes. So, so, you know, um, we were ta we were talking a little bit about gut health earlier. It's you know, seventy percent of your immune system resides within your gut. Ninety percent of the serotonin that's made is in the body, the, what I call the happy transmitter, yes. and it makes you feel great, um, is not made in the brain, it's made in the gut. We have 500 million brain cells within the lining of our gut, and our weight is directly connected to our gut. So we need to encourage a balance, a healthy overflow, if you will, of uh, healthy gut bacteria. And eating uh, healthfully will do this, um, and probiotics, I can go into it if you like. I yeah. wish we could. I wish I could steal you away for four more hours because I know I'm going to get, <laughs> once again, a thousand calls. Oh, I wish you two had more time. But, Lori, I think, uh, what do we have, another minute here? So, Lori, quick final thoughts, and then I've got a couple announcements yeah. to make, and then we'll sign off and we'll be compelled to do another show. All right. <laughs> yes. Uh, final thoughts. Please uh, don't be afraid. Don't look at the big picture. Just take one step at a time. If you're just starting out, if you're not, take that other step that make another choice and it will eventually become a habit. Fantastic. I want to once again, if you haven't read her book, How to Fight Fat Formation, it is excellent. She has many good ideas. She makes it easy to understand great information that's easily uh, implemented in your life. Lori, how may they get your books and how may they contact you? You can find my book, How to Fight Fat Formation, anywhere books are sold. And it's sold on Amazon as well. Uh, you can find it on my, my website. Uh, my other book, Fire Up Your Fat Burn, is found on Amazon and on my website as well. Fantastic. Dr. Lori Shemek, it has been such a pleasure. I, I'm so grateful that you joined me today. I'm sure Thanks. we'll have a lot of no. questions and we'll field many of them on Facebook. I will talk to you Please soon. Feel free to reach out. Fantastic. Yes. All right, real quickly, I'll be back here in two weeks. My guest is Dr. Tracy Doe. We'll be talking about the mental health of our young people. Thank you again for joining me. Dr. Nelson Bullmash, signing out. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Health Matters with Dr. Nelson Bullmash, where we help you.